I am speaking as a superior of an ecumenical monastic community, the community of Jesus, located in the United States of America in Orleans, Massachusetts, Cape Cod. We are part of the Benedictine tradition and step by step have grown more deeply committed to the arts. Sacred music, visual art, and theater have become our currency of contribution in human spiritual growth. The room I am in is in a building given to the work and the changing display of visual art as a soul's expression of exploration, wrestling, adoration, and the love of Jesus Christ, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. It began first with our own worship and spread outward. Traveling with our professional choir for years to Europe opened our eyes wider to riches in history, culture, and current energies revealing the work of people and the Holy Spirit to glorify God. Deepening our roots and exchange of art and spirituality with Europe, in 2013, we founded a center in Tuscany, Embarga, Italy, which promotes ecumenical conversation through scholarly papers and presentations, applied work in the sacred arts, and the creation and exhibition of Christian art. Paul VI, at the end of the Second Vatican Council, speaking to the world, said that beauty can unite different generations in admiration. We believe that beauty can also unite people of different views, Christians of different confessions. I am Timothy Verdon, a Catholic priest and the director of an ecumenical center for art and spirituality created by an American Protestant monastic community which promotes the visual arts and sacred music. In the film that you'll now see, a Catholic man, an Italian, Filippo Rossi, and a Protestant American woman, Susan Canaga, work together to prepare an exhibit dedicated to the Holy Spirit, to the Creator Spirit. They try in an abstract language to express that vitality which all believers feel and identify as coming from God, uh, which allows artists to create works that we call inspired and prophetic, that allows artists to deeply touch the human spirit. Their work together is a breathtaking example of how ecumenical collaboration exposes and expresses the great truths which unite all Christians and gifts the world with a shared beauty connecting all persons of good will. I first met Filippo at a conference in 2011 in Florence and had seen uh, for the first time his work at an exhibit in Panzano and I was drawn to his work and I knew immediately we had a connection. So when I finished my uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in 2013, I was in search of a teacher who could guide me into this new world of abstract sacred art, which I had a great desire to learn. And Filippo's name came up and um, he accepted me as a pupil and we've been working together, I think collaborating more now um, and it's been an exciting journey. Although we come from different Christian traditions, I'm Catholic while Susan is Protestant, we know we are united by a shared faith in Jesus Christ, and thus our work is truly a single ecumenical experience of collaboration and of representation of Christ and the Holy Spirit. This is indeed one of the themes we explore. I believe our collaboration works because we both share a call to express our faith in art and a deep inner commitment to search for God's beauty and truth and express this in our work. When Filippo and I work together, we strive for a material and a spiritual balance, always towards an ecumenical vision. In this way, our work is in conversation. 
And I think one reason this is possible is the respect we have for each other's call. This way of working allows us to obtain different results with different techniques, just as Catholic and Protestant traditions are different, and yet the artworks achieve a state of completion. So the work we do today is really born out of difference. Um, we come from different faith traditions, we have a different stylistic approach, we use different techniques, and even the surfaces we prefer to work on are different. But I think this serves to underscore our individuality as people and as artists. I started my artistic work using very humble, low-cost, very simple materials. I began with wood, with cloth, and materials that can be readily found. And little by little, I sought to enrich them through the use of gold leaf. Recently, however, I have discovered the use of a very pliant material that lends itself extremely well to deep slashes and cuttings or to jutting, overhanging effects. Dense polystyrene, a substance derived from styrofoam, but which contains less air and which offers more opportunities for crafting and shaping. This material permits me to make either painting sculptures, that is, pictorial sculptures, or sculptural paintings. Here then is a double possibility. And at the same time, I can go more deeply into the material using specific techniques, specific tools and resources, for example, acids, or I can use fire, and various incising or battering tools, stones and other materials that can leave marks and imprints. Because for me, it's fundamental to show the sign, the trace, the material, the element that emerges in a very powerful way, in a very pronounced way. My passion is painting and has been for many years. I prefer to work on canvas as a support. And I found that working on canvas, I have the ability to not only work on a two-dimensional surface, but through adding different materials, I also am able to create a more three-dimensional um, view to a work. And that's added new interest to me. Abstract sacred art gives us the same language within which to work and a new way to explore uh, such things as God's love and Christ's example and the mysteries of the Holy Spirit. The artwork I'm exhibiting presents cuts and lacerations which nevertheless allow for a way out, a way towards redemption. The evocative force of this piece is subject to the judgment of the viewer who in this way might be able to find a space of salvation between the lacerations of matter and the gold leaf, which represents the spirit. Every work gathers within itself the wonder of a new life, a new experience, but also every scratch, every furrow. These together represent that complexity of life, which is a part of every person's individual life. This is why I chose non-figurative art, because I think that spiritual experiences, more than being narrated, must be lived in a direct, personal way. It is an artistic language that shows our differences and clarifies them, but more importantly, it shows a oneness of purpose, which is a shared faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. In this case, the work of the artist becomes not only an aesthetic manifestation, but more fully a testimony of faith. This happens when the artist silences his or her own ego, seeking direct contact with the Absolute, the Eternal. When I work, I think my main objective is to get myself out of the way. And I pray and I focus on the work, but mostly on trying to listen to the Holy Spirit so that I can hear what God wants me to do. And more often than not, this comes through by making a mistake or having an accident, and a new idea comes, and it's usually always better than what I've started out with. And thus the artist becomes imbued by the spirit that brings one fully to life. In this way, it is possible for artists to transmit sparks and flashes of divine transcendence to others. 
This way of working helps the artist in his or her interior growth, and prayer helps the artist with his or her creativity. For me, painting is like praying.